I would have had this up and ready, except I kind of found that whenever I shut my laptop, it, the, the emulator would lose the internet connection. So I was like, no problem, I'll just start it fresh. No, this is all uh, live. But I do have another emulator to try. But this one doesn't have play services, which might mess us up in a bit. You know, I'm just going to see if Eclipse can start ADB for me. Maybe that's my problem. Maybe the tools are too complicated. Okay, thanks for bearing with me. I'm gonna give up. We'll go back to iOS. <laughs> and we have to skip notifications because iOS doesn't have notifications. So I will. Uh, I should explain that. So our notification plugin um, does Android notifications only because we, when we looked into it, we found that on iOS you can't send a, you can't just post a notification when your app is in the foreground. Um, it kind of just has the effect that it's like it was notif uh, posted and then they clicked on it right away. So there's no actual visual cue that you posted a notification. So for that reason, it didn't really map well onto the Chrome package app. Um, concept of notifications, so if you get our notification plugin, uh, you'll find that it works only on Android, um, but you can show notifications, dismiss them, have a list in them, show an icon, all that kind of thing. We have other cool things to look at. Maybe that's why it was off the list. <coughs> Chrome.identity, aka OAuth2, which is uh, something I'm still, we're still struggling through. Um, but it's worth it in the end, because it's worth it on Android to not force the user to type in their username and password. So on Android, you can connect to Play Services, and they just choose the account that they want. Um, and that makes it worth all the pain. So let me get my cheat sheet out here. Plug and add Chrome identity. Now there's kind of um, a few steps involved, and I wanted to go through them with you. Uh, I might go a, a bit fast, uh, but you can always check in on the instructions later. So the first thing you need to do to enable your app to use uh, Google Authentication is sign into your Google account, go to our um, API console, and enable, uh, create a new client ID for your app. So you do that uh, under API access, create another client ID. For now, on iOS, you have to choose a web ID. Um, if this were Android, you'd say install application Android, and then enter in your your certificate, and your package name. Um, 
So our, on iOS, we're just using in-app browser and with a web client ID. But I'm going to say just we're still trying to figure out if we can make this a bit nicer on iOS to actually use um, an installed iOS application client ID. So just kind of consider this plugin uh, to be don't ship an application on iOS with it for now. Uh, but it is working quite well on Android. Uh, so step two, so client ID, you can just copy and paste it. Step two is services, where you have to turn some on. So I turned on the calendar API, the drive API, the drive SDK for this demo. I do want to also point out the APIs Explorer, which I found really helpful. Um, so for all the Google APIs that you might want to be accessing, uh, if you want to use the OAuth for more than just you know, getting a, a token for a user, if you want to actually get some of their, their Google stored data, uh, all the APIs are really easily explorable in this tool. That's all I'm going to say about that. Back to Xcode. That's a bunch of stuff. This is harder than it looks. OK, I am going to, because I don't know what I did wrong here or what I messed up. When I practiced this, I practiced it on Android. And so I kind of wasn't giving iOS all that much attention for this part. And now it's kind of getting me. I'm going to again skip, sadly. I'm going to mention chrome.sync file system. OK, so Google Drive stores files. Um, there's already a JavaScript API for getting at the user's drive files. So there's not a whole lot of point to adding an extra API on top of that for packaged apps, except um, we did think of a kind of one neat thing to do. It's called chrome.sync file system. And the idea here is that each app has um, a drive-backed directory that gets synced. And so every time a user logs into the same app under the same account, that uh, drive will just be available to the application. Um, this is nice for security-wise uh, in that your application doesn't need to request permission to use your drive because it can't actually see all the other files within your drive. It can only see its one folder. Uh, the other neat thing is that even when your app is closed, um, because the runtime is doing this, files are syncing. Um, so we do have a, a uh, Cordova plugin for, for this. Um, you know, I wanted to show it with iOS and Android side by side. So we've got to skip. Um, but it's kind of, I will just say, it's app, don't ship an app with this one yet either. We want you to start playing with it if you want. Um, but there's still more, more work to be done just to make it more robust. Uh, but you can actually you know, request a file system, which has the same interface as the Cordova file system or the HTML5 file system. Uh, write files, will sync up. And uh, it's kind of nice because it's easy to debug. Because all you do is go on your, um, your own Google Drive account, and you can just see the folder there with all the files in it. Um, so it's kind of nice in that respect. 
So I was trying to save the best for last, because although I think OAuth is the hardest one to get right, um, besides you know actually starting your, your emulator, this one might be more exciting. So Chrome.socket is one of our earlier plugins that we had ready. Um, we put it up on the plugin registry, and it allows you to talk TCP IP, uh, not necessarily just HTTP. So there's client and server. Given my luck so far, I'm just going to use this pre-made server. Okay, actually, even first, so I've already loaded this. This is, um, as well as showing off the Chrome Socket API, I did want to show off our, uh, our ability to run a Chrome packaged app under Cordova um, going through our, our uh, interop layer. So here we're going to see the app first running uh, as a Chrome app. So launch web server 0 0.1.1. And I happen to know that this runs on port 8,000 and... 81. Cool. So now you have a web server that just served up a file to your browser, from your browser. You see assets. So it's kind of fun how this works under the hood, because to, to actually serve you the file, it needs to get the file. And how it gets the file is it just does an XHR to itself to find the files under your own assets directory. And then it um, pipes them through a socket you know, with uh, the proper response and header and, and body. Um, so you can see your server's working. Now I'm going to close this. Um, and so I've just, all I did is I took that folder. Maybe I'll show you my cheat sheet line. Let's create for iOS. I give it the path to the source, which is our web server sample, and I give it a name. And that's, uh, that's what I typed to get this uh, folder going here. Yeah, OK, so it's only exciting if it works, right? Let's try out our web server. Local 881. There it is, served from my Cordova application. Yeah, it is weird. <laughs> but now, to take it one step weirder, what happens if you send an XHR from the Cordova app to the server running within your own app? Why, I don't know, but wouldn't it be cool if that worked? So new, X, if you want to complete, X dot open, get uh, local HTTP. Oh. Looks like it hit it. Got a 200. And served up a page. So yes, we are, our Chrome socket served a web server to an XHR running within the exact same web view that served the data for the, the server. Um, I don't know why you just didn't get the variable. <laughs> So that's kind of a nice API in that it's, it's, uh, it'll either work or it doesn't work, and, it's, and it works. So you can get that one just by, looks like stuff got even smaller. Um, you know, Cordova plugin install, um, chromium, chromium slash, chromium dot, uh, Socket. 
So I don't know what happened to my monitor. It's cropping my windows. And, oh, <laughs> my fault again. Um, so unless you want to watch me struggle some more, that's kind of all the demos that I had. Um, the JavaScript debugging on Android is really cool to see as a demo. So maybe if, if you want to grab me afterwards, um, I can almost guarantee as soon as I sit down, the emulator is going to work. Um, otherwise, that's also, is there, is there time for questions, or should I go? Yeah, OK. Does anyone have questions about any of the APIs that I did or did not show? Or about the plugin registry, or about? Good question. When do we expect the APIs to be ready? So there's, there's five that I showed off today. Of them, um, in their readmes, I, we, I put a line there that says status, you know, stable or status, don't ship an app with this, uh, which I called alpha, because you can't call it beta and be Google and for that to mean anything. So chrome.storage.local, go ahead and use it. Uh, chrome.storage.sync, in fact, you can go ahead and use that too, it just doesn't sync anything. Chrome.identity for Android um, works great. Pops up the native account picker. The one caveat to that one is if you, do, if you are dealing with multiple accounts, um, there's not a good way after they do choose their account for the first time for you to say, you know, maybe let's let them change which account they're using. Um, so it's probably good for simple apps, but if you really need the full deal, um, that's something we're still going to add. Um, for iOS, uh, I would say it's close. Um, Chrome.notifications, which I didn't show as well, that's go ahead and use it, that's stable. And then uh, sync file system, play with it, don't use it. Chrome.socket, go ahead and use it. Uh, you can do other things other than a web server. Uh, at the last phone gap day, we sh uh, Michael showed a video of flying a quadrocopter. It was sending messages straight from the phone to the device without a, a node server in the middle. So that's kind of I guess those kind of two useless applications of Socket that we showed. <laughs> uh, any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, this